No, I think I fooled everyone when I told you there was four parables here, and there actually is uh, four parables here. And um, we find that we read the first one, when life is out of the care of the shepherd in the lost sheep. The, 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 the uh, Pharisees came to Jesus and said, you ate in the house of sinners, you're out of place. You have no business eating in the house of sinners. And uh, so he turns it around and gives them these four parables and says, no, you're out of place. And so the lost sheep is when they're out of, out of reach of the care of the shepherd. And uh, then we find the lost coin when you're out of circulation. And uh, all, both the sheep and the coin was found and put back in its place. Then we find the prodigal son, the lost son when, when uh, life is uh, out of place, when it's outside of the father's care. And so we find that he, he came home, amen? And, and uh, we looked at that last week. And it's a type of, of the Christian being out of church and out of the out of the will of God and going off into the far country, and uh, there's a lesson there that I didn't mention last week. And as you parents get children that grow, uh, we shouldn't finance the far country. That's going to cause them to stay longer uh, and cost them more. And we have no business financing things that are not of God. And so it's hard for us to watch our children go out, out of the will of God, but we don't have to have a part. We can love them and care for them as the Father did and wait for them to come back, but we don't have to finance that far country. And uh, so we found that the, the son came home. Now tonight, I know this seems like one, but uh, there's another son we're going to look at tonight, and that's the elder son. And even though it is in the same story, it is a separate person. And so we want to look at that tonight. And uh, not a lot of preaching on the elder son, but there's a lot here that we can look at. And that life is out of place when it's out of communion. And so we're going to look in verse number 25. The Bible says, Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. He was angry, not glad, not happy that the brother's home, but angry, and would not go in. Therefore came the father out and entreated him. You see, the father waited for the younger son to come home, and then when this elder son came home, he went out to entreat. God is always looking for us. Amen. God is always willing to receive us if we come the right way, come his way. Amen. Uh, and so he entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, and I, make, uh, I might make merry with my friends, but as soon as thy son was come, can you hear the tone? Which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatty calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Father, we ask that you touch the service tonight. Use me, give me unction to preach. And Lord, let it stick in the hearts of those that hear it. We pray, God, that you would help us now in Jesus' name. All right, in the, as introducing this, we find the, what we taught last week and we saw last week, the circumstances that provoked this older brother was that the prodigal did go out, did waste his living, did scar up his life, did hurt the father, and yet he did come home. And I want you to notice something. I, I had never noticed this before, but the elder son, who was drawing the, the elder son? The father. He said, I will go back to my father's house. He was drawing nigh to the father. Who was the elder son drawn to? The house. 
He, was, he wasn't drawn to the Father. He, was, he heard what was going on in the house. And it angered him and it upset him about what was going on in that. You listen, you can come to church and still not be right with the Father. Amen. Amen? You, 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 the one you need to draw to is the Lord. And He will put it in you to want to come to the house. Amen? Amen? So we find the circumstances there. Then we find that there's some characteristics that are portrayed by this older son that happens to every Christian. Every child of God has these things that develop in their life, and if they're left unchecked, will get worse and worse and will become a stronghold in your life. You remember I taught on strongholds, not uh, preached on strongholds not long ago. Now, this story is an invitation to a pity party. This, this young man's having a big pity party, and he, uh, he feels like he's the one that ought to be having the party and not the younger son. I've actually seen that in Christians that they don't want anybody else to have something good to them. They want it all to come to them. And so we find some truths here. Now, in these truths, and I don't have time to deal with all of them, but I will name them. Number one, we find that he's full of pride. He's full of pride. He's full of what happens to him, and that's it. That's all he cares about. Amen? Let me ask you something. Do you get victory when you see somebody else get victory? Amen. I do. I, I enjoy that, and, I, and I, I will put myself out to make sure they get victory. Amen. Now, I have to fight pride, amen? We all have to fight pride, but he had pride in his life. Pride caused jealousy. There was jealousy there. You never had a party for me. You never killed a fatty calf for me. <laughs> and so he became jealous. I heard a preacher preach, Ron Garris, years ago with Rock of Ages. He preached, what's wrong with that boy? He's jealous. He's jealous. He's, he's upset that this is not about him. Jealousy is, is a byproduct of pride. We, we think it ought, ought to all be about us. Amen? And so he becomes jealous. Then, and then there is bitterness in this. Uh, he's not willing to forgive his brother. He names off all of his sins, what he's done. He took your money. He got with harlots and wasted his living. He begins to name his sin. Now, I want to ask you something. Do you want people to start naming your sin? And, uh, and really, if we could see inside your hidden sin, do you want anybody to see that? No. So that, that uh, root of bitterness is in there. And, and so this younger this, this elder son is filled with things that he should not be filled with, and so can the Christian be filled with these things. Amen. If we stay out of communion with God, the Bible will correct you. That's why we stay away from it. You know, let, let's put this over here, and then it can't see me. <laughs> but God can see you. Amen. God, listen, I, I, you can believe this or not, uh, but there was a preacher in our, in our town that got out of the will of God. He just got out of the will of God. Things happened in his life. His wife cheated on him, and he quit preaching and, and just quit church. He just got out of the will of God. Now, his wife uh, doing that was not good, and I can imagine there was some nights spent crying and all that, but should that have caused a separation between him and God? No. He was driving down the road one day. Now, he tells this. A total stranger was blinking his lights at him. He pulls over, and the stranger gets up to his window, and he said, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. He said, but God told me, I, God just showed me I should pull you over and tell you, you need to get right with God. Ouch. <laughs> is that not a, is that not a, you? I think I'd be getting right with God, don't you? I mean, this guy didn't know him from Adam and, and, uh, and, and did that. And so, listen, God will reach you. You can put your Bible away, but he'll still find a way that somebody will send you a message that you need to get right. Ask David. You know, the, 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 the preacher stood there in his face and said, you are the man. Thou art the man. You're the one who is guilty. Amen? And so, God will find a way to reach us. We can hide our Bible if we want to, but God will still reach us some way because he loves us. Amen. Because he wants us in his will, and he wants us to have victory, and he wants us to be right. But we find in the story that this elder son, 
is, uh, is coming home from working all day. One preacher said he probably had a long day, probably pulling weeds and, and chasing cattle and went to work early and came home late and then this big party's going on. And uh, the first thing that happened was the Bible says, and he was angry. He became angry. He was angry at the father. He was angry at the son. He was angry at the whole house because they were praising and having a, a, a time of praising God that the son had come home. He was angry about it. Pride, the description of pride. Amen. He was away from praise. He didn't want any part of the praise. He, didn't want, he wasn't uh, in a place where he could even be thankful that his, his uh, younger son came home and got right. He wasn't in that place. I'm going to tell you something. When your misery loves company, <laughs> and, and if you're miserable, you want company. You want everybody else to be miserable, and you'll try to make that happen as much as you can. And so when he had pride in his life, uh, it, it caused him to be separate from the praise. Amen. Luke 15, 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. He, he wasn't even there when the son came home. When he got home, he got angry about the son being home. He was angered by the praise. What's all this noise coming out of the house? Why is everybody so happy? You know, I worked a long, hard day for this farm and for my dad, and I, why is everybody else so happy? That's pride. Amen. You're not doing everything. <laughs> Amen. Elijah said, I'm the only one that's, you know, not bowed my knee to, to, to Baal. And the fact of the matter is, God straightened him up on that. You're not, you don't know the truth. Amen. You're not doing the whole thing. You're not carrying the whole load. I'm not carrying the whole load. And you're not carrying the whole load. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so pride came into his life. Uh, and then Pride will uh, cause you to destruct. It, 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 will, it will rob everything good out of your life when you have pride. Because you can't look at what's good. You can't see what's good for your own self. Amen? He was angry and would not. Not that he could not go in. He would not go in. Stubbornness. Rebellion. Rebellion in your heart will keep you from the things of God. And will hurt you. Now I look at this story, and I see that the younger son definitely uh, was scarred by what he did. I heard a message one time about the younger son came home, but he didn't come home without scars. He, I mean, we can go over the story, but uh, he, he did wrong. And you get scarred every time you, go, you do wrong. Amen? It, you're not going to get away with that. There will be something in your life that will scar you and, and cause you grief. But the older son was just as scarred. He, he's, he's been out in the field thinking about that, you, you, you siblings, that stupid younger brother <laughs> going away from the father. What's wrong with him? Why is he doing that? I never did that. Why is he doing that? And this big thing going on in his heart, and it's all focused on him. And it will scar you. Amen. Anger will scar you. Pride will scar you. Jealousy will scar you. Bitterness will keep you in a place of, of, of defeat all the days of your life. Pride destroys fruitfulness. He was angry. There's no love, joy, peace. Brother Kelly went over this in, in discipleship. There was none of that in his life because he was prideful. Pride destroys fellowship. He would not go in. He chose to stay out instead of going in. You know what happens to a person that's prideful? They eventually stop coming to church. Amen. They eventually stop coming to church. They eventually stop reading their Bible. They eventually stop doing the things of God because it destroys fellowship. Then the distortion of pride. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time. Now, how many of you believe that he never sinned? How many of y'all believe that he never went against his father? That's not true. Uh, thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, uh, that I might make merry with my friends. It distorted his vision. He kept saying, I, me, how about me? <laughs> Let's focus on me, Dad. You ever see somebody get blessed? 
I mean, really blessed. And the devil tries to raise up some kind of pride in your, well, what about me? <laughs> what about what I'm doing? There's a preacher preached a message one time uh, in, in the Bible. Uh, uh, Peter tries to put the focus on John. Uh, you know, what about John? What, what you know? And, uh, and he tells a story about this man who comes to the pastor and says, I'm going to start mowing the grass. He said, okay. He said, we got a lawnmower, and I'll keep gas out there, and you can mow the grass. He said, well, the lawnmower was hard to start. In summertime, it was hot as it can be. There was another member named John. One day, John go by, drove by in his bass boat, with his bass boat hooked to his truck, blowed the horn and waved. And that made him angry. And he went in, and he said, what about John? Why is he not helping me mow the grass? He said, you volunteered to, grow, to mow the grass. It's your responsibility. You can't look at what everybody else is doing. And you don't know what John's doing that you're not. Amen. Amen? We get bitter about things, and we, and we hold things in and angry, and, and, and those things will defeat you, and it causes a distorted vision that you begin to look at yourself. If you're looking at yourself all the time, you can't see people who are lost and need things. If you're looking at yourself all the time, you can't even look at what God wants you to do. And so you can't be that way. Amen? His distorted values. Yah never gave me a kid. I served thee and never broke one commandment. Amen? What is the value? Never transgressed I any of thy commandments. Amen? He thought, I'm more valuable than the elder son. I'm going to tell you something. In my eyes, I'm no more valuable. I'm no more valuable than the drunk on the street. Amen. God, just by his grace, saved me. I could literally go to the jail and preach in the jail and say, but by grace would I be here. Amen. I could easily have been one of Kelly's clients before I got saved. And I could easily be one today, but for the grace of God. And so if I put the focus on me, I can't see others the way I need to see them. Then the deliverance from pride. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, the father, uh, therefore came his father out and entreated him. The father was abundant in his provision for him. He came to him. Did you know the father loves you tonight? God loves you more than you know he loves you. He came out of that. Now, he could have he threw a fit back and cut the son off and, and, uh, and, and punished the son, but he didn't. He came out and entreated him. He came out and spoke to him. Did you know that God's first act for you is not, is not chastisement? It's speaking to you. It's, it's trying to get you to see how much he loves you and, and, and what you have and how, how blessed you are to have those things. Amen? He said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. What a joy to know that everything the Father has is mine. Every promise he ever made uh, to us is mine. E every provision that he has, the Bible says, according to his grace. According to his grace. Out of the riches of his grace, he has blessed us. And everything that he has, I have. Brother Kelly said, I, he, he's so good to me, so much that I don't deserve. It, I have here. He's ever with me. He never leaves me, never forsakes me. I've stood at the side of my brother's grave that took his own life, and God did not forsake me. I got bitter about that, and God did not forsake me. I went to church, and a preacher preached and, and put his finger on my chest and said, you know, you need to get right with God. God did not forsake me. He loves us. He said, you're ever with me, and I've not withheld anything from you. He could have had a fatty calf any time he wanted it. He lives right there in the abundance of God. You know why you don't have what you think you need? The Bible says we have not because we ask not. We're right, living right in the middle of His grace, right in the middle of His provision, and yet we don't ask for the things uh, that we have need of. Amen? 
The Father achieved his purpose. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. He reminded him some things. He said, number one, he's your brother. Thy brother. Amen? I'm your brother. No matter what state I'm in, I'm still your brother. Amen. And you should care for me like a brother. And we should care for each other like brothers and sisters. Amen? Even when we're wrong, we should care for one another like brothers and sisters. Amen? I have, a, I have four sisters. And uh, I have one brother. He's passed. But I have four sisters. Only one of those sisters talks to me. The other three, because they drink and they do drugs and stuff, don't really like what I have to say, and so they won't ask me anything or talk to me. Now, I still love them. In fact, we were over here one day, Brother Kelly was here, and I got a call from one of them, and I took the call. And she wanted to cry to me about her husband leaving her and all that, and I, I listened several weeks. Evidently, they're back together because she quit calling. But that doesn't stop me. And she's caught, you know, she's caused me a lot of trouble. She's, she's, she's really vindictive. And yet I still take her call. Amen. Because she is my sister and I still love her. And I would love to see her get right. And I don't want to cut anything loose that would cause a, a division between us that I can't get her the gospel. I don't agree with her lifestyle. I don't agree with what she does. But I still love her. And greater than that, God never stops loving us. And he's always there to make sure that we have uh, the knowledge that he's there. He said, thy brother. He said he was dead. He said, your brother was dead. Now, he wasn't physically dead, but he was dead from the family. He was gone. They didn't know where he was. They didn't know if he wasn't physically dead. He said, your brother was dead. That's something you should care about. That's something you should be... Uh, praying about. You know, if somebody gets outside the will of God, we might not can, can uh, go and talk to them into coming back, but we can talk to the Father. We can pray. We can, we can talk in their stead. Amen? You know, Abraham was a good uh, 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 example of intercession. Lot, he, Lot couldn't do anything. He was wrong. But Abraham interceded. Amen? For Lot. And so that's what we can do. And yet he didn't do that. Didn't realize that he was dead. And he said, but now he's alive. And now that he's alive, we ought to be thankful for that. And we ought to be praising for that. But all you can see is you. You can't even see that your brother needs you uh, to pray. He was lost. But now he's found. Amen. Amen. He was out of place. But now he's back in place. And now the father's looking at him like, now you're out of place. You're not in the, you're just as bad as he was because you're, you can cut, listen to him. You can be faithful to church. You can, you can sing songs. You can uh, take your place in your seat and come and still be just as wrong as somebody. Now, listen to me. Sin has different consequ consequences. Is that right? You can, you can do something that only hurts you, but you can also do something that hurts everybody else. Right? You can kill a person, and that person never going to come back to life. That's a pretty permanent consequence, right? Suicide is a permanent consequence. Th things like that are permanent, okay? Uh, me saying a, a, a cuss word while I'm trying to start the lawnmower, which I don't do, <laughs> doesn't have the same consequence. Amen. But to God, it's still sin. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. It's still sin. And so we have to be careful to categorize bows who killed somebody from me saying a cuss word and say, well, he's worse than me. The son was just as bad as the younger son. The consequences were a little different, Amen. but they were the same. To the father, they were the same. The father had to come out and pay attention to the son and try to talk him down from all this stuff that was going on in his, in his head and his heart. God doesn't want us to feel that way about, about the ministry and about, about each other and, 
and, and then look down our noses and say, that person's worse than me. Amen. That person may be causing greater uh, 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 consequences than you, but that doesn't mean that your sin is any less than that person. Yep. Amen? You agree with that? Amen. I think that's right. Amen. And, uh, you know, the Bible, uh, God clears that up in the Bible and says we can have a bad thought the same as murder. Amen? You ever have a bad thought of somebody driving? Yeah. I mean, they whiz by you, almost wreck you and your family, and give you the one-finger salute, and you want to follow them, <laughs> you know, and tell them of their wrong. But at the same time, you're having a bad thought in your mind about that person. You know what I'm saying? God, that's hard. It's a hard thing. We can't categorize sin and say, your sin's worse than my sin. Sin is sin. And God deals with sin the same way. And He wants it out of our hearts. And we see a picture here of one guy trying to say the other guy was worse than him, and he's causing the father the same, same thing. He's having to deal with this son now because he's got these things in his heart. He was there every day. He worked in the field every day. And Brother Bill, I believe he was probably valuable to the Father because he worked in the field every day. Yet in his heart, there was putrid things going on there. Amen. Pride will come out as anger. Pride will come out as bitterness. Somebody did something to you in the past and you do not forgive them no matter how vulgar or bad or hard it was. It's only hurting you because you won't forgive. That doesn't mean you're going to go to that person. That person's going to say, oh, I'm sorry, and everything's going to be made right. But on your part, you have to take that to God and say, I'm not going to let this eat me up. Amen. I'm not going to let this destroy my Christian life. Amen. And that's hard. It's really hard. That's easier to say than it is to actually do. But you've got to let it go because God wants to use you. God, the father needed his help to get the son back. And yet he had checked out because of his own pride, his own bitterness. One of these days I planned on tonight, but I ain't going to have time, but I'd like to deal with bitterness, go deep in it, show you that it, it does you no good. It does you no good. And you're not, that person don't even know you're eat up. <laughs> and yet you're bitter inside. And there's a root to it. You got to get to that root. You got to pull out the root. And that bitterness can be gone. I promise you it can be gone. Amen. Amen. I was abused as a child. I know what I'm talking about. Okay? I, my father, uh, my stepfather carried me across the lawn by the hair of the head. That's how he carried me, I, like a suitcase. I mean, we were cast out of our home in the middle of a snowstorm and our clothes all burned up in front of us. I, I know what it's like to carry bitterness. But I had to come to a point where I said, God, I want free of all this. Amen. I, I just want free of this. I can't be productive. I can't be the pastor you want me to be. I can't be the Christian that you want me to be and harbor these things in my heart. You got to let them go. And it came out as anger. I mean, I just all of a sudden get angry about things. And it was that root of bitterness that was in my heart. Amen. Everybody has things happen to them. Yeah. Sometimes they're extremely bad. But we can't carry those things the rest of our lives. We'll be bitter. Amen? And I want, I want to give you a little secret. Everybody sees the bitterness. Everybody sees the anger. Everybody sees the pride. Amen? They see it. You think everybody in that house didn't know that the son was sitting out there? What's going on? Why is this for him and not for me? Hmm? I'm not trying to be cute. I'm trying to be, tell you the truth. People see it. It manifests in your attitude. It manifests in your... I can, I can show you people that, that are filled with unforgiveness and bitterness. They won't even look you in the eye. And you didn't do anything. They're carrying it so hard and deep. And I'm going to tell you something. There is a victory in bringing that to to Christ and saying, I don't know how I can do this. I don't know how I can forgive my stepdad for the way he treated me. I don't know how I can do that, but I'm asking you to help me. 
And all of a sudden, Brother Kelly, it just lifted and there was peace. There was a peace that passes all understanding. I, he didn't let me understand it. He just said, I can take it away Amen. if you'll give it. Amen. So we see this story in this elder son of a life that's ruined because of his own pride and his own bitterness and his own, he's just filled with it. You can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not possessed, but you, 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 you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit with all those things. And you're, you're filled with one thing or the other. You can't be filled with both. Amen. And so if we want to be, we want to be productive for God. If we want to live in fellowship with God and communion with God, then we have to put some things on the altar. We have to, to slay it, kill it. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Mortify the flesh. Kill me every day. Lay me down as a living sacrifice and, and renew my mind that these strongholds no more have power in my life. Now, the devil's going to bring them around. You have evidence to him that bothers you, and so he's going to bring it around. He's going to let you know he knows what that is. But we serve one greater than the devil. Amen. And God can give us the victory if we bring it to him. Amen? Amen. Now, this may not have meant anything to you. I think it should. But this elder son was out of place. He wasn't in the right place. He wasn't in the right state of mind. He wasn't in the right spirit about the things of, of the father. It meant a lot to the father that the elder son came home. Father watched for him every day. It would have been nice had he been in shape to celebrate and praise with the father. Amen. Where are you at today? Are you even saved? Are, do you know for sure you're saved? You can know that. You can walk away today with peace, that you're born again, that you're saved, that you're right with God. And then you might be coming to church all the time, but you still got things in your heart that you're harboring. It's manifesting into this bitter, prideful, jealous spirit and will get you nowhere but down. Would you come tonight? And get that settled. I'm going to ask the church one thing. If you knew in your heart there was somebody here that was in the state of this elder son, would you care enough about them to pray? There, there are, there are, there's probably somebody here in that state. Maybe more than one. Maybe something happened to them in the past that they've never given up. Would you be willing to pray for them? Would you be willing to intercede for them? And ask God to help them to overcome that and be productive for God. Would you do that? Maybe you're the one that needs the help. Would you come and get it? Because it's here. It's here. He's standing with his arms open wide telling you to come. But you've got to come. You've got to lay it down. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Let them come get a song. Starts with being honest with God, honest with yourself, honest with God, asking God to, to, to make it real to you, and then coming and giving it up. Would you do that tonight? I don't believe a preach that in vain. I believe somebody needs it. You're here tonight and you need to be saved. Won't you come? He said, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord.